You can now use AI to generate and execute your R code for you. So this is Julius AI, and I have mentioned Julius AI in previous videos before, but what they just released was a new feature that allows you to actually run everything within R. So you can see if you come up here, originally it is, it is only in Python. So it used to be able to generate Python code and run Python code. But I know a lot of scientists use R code instead, and R code is a lot easier to initially understand than Python is typically. So it's sometimes a lot easier if you're just using coding for data analysis to use R code instead of Python code. So now what you can do is if you click this drop down here, you can switch it to R, which is currently in beta for Julius AI. Once you've done this, you can then input in what you want it to do. And for this example, I'm actually going to use a native R data set. So I'm gonna use the MPG data set within R and Julius has already loaded in tidyverse for you into their R environment so that you can much more easily use the natural things within tidyverse within Julius AI. So what I'm gonna do is input in a prompt here that says, please create a group bar chart using the MPG data set. And then we're gonna have manufacturer on the X axis with MPG on the Y axis. And we want the group bar chart to be between city or highway miles per gallon. And we want this chart to be formatted so that it's ready to send to a scientific publication. And we can submit this and see how well it does. If you're working on writing your scientific research paper and you're doing your data analysis for that, check out my scientific research paper checklist. It's an entire checklist to help you to figure out what steps you need to take to be able to submit your paper and write a high quality paper in the end. So you can see the first thing it does is it gives us the R code. And then the second thing it does is execute the R code and give us the output of that R code. Now, here's something that's really interesting. While there is the fill for both city and highway, you can see that we actually only have one color. We don't have a group bar chart, we just have a bar chart here. And so if we look at this, what we can see is it did no alterations to the MPG data set. So there's no way to take the MPG data set and generate the actual chart that I'm looking for. You have to actually rearrange the MPG data set to get the chart that I'm looking for. And that's why even though it is including some of the things like position dodge and all of this, to generate this, it's not successfully generating what I'm asking for. And this is to be expected, right? So this is one reason why the title of this video isn't gonna be you never have to program an R again, because knowing how programming works and knowing how you need to think through a problem is incredibly important, even if you're using AI to generate the code. So what we're going to do instead is we're actually going to create a step-by-step -step process that's going to allow it to generate a correct chart for us. So I have typed in a new prompt. And so we're giving it two steps. The first step is to create a data set from the MPG database with manufacturer, the MPG type. So I'm giving it the columns to pull it from the mean value called MPG and the standard deviation called SD. So now I'm telling it first set up this graph or set up this data set so then we can use it. So you need to be able to know how does the data set really need to be in order to generate the graphs that you'd want. Then we're going to use this data set to create a group bar chart and I'm basically giving it the information before and I'm telling it to add vertical error bars of the standard deviation, then format it with a clean background, bold axis. So I'm giving it a little bit more information about what I would expect for a actual chart ready for scientific publication. And so if I run this, so this is where something really interesting happens. And this is where I think Julius AI really sets itself apart from something like ChatGPT, where you could ask it the same questions and get the some R code given out to you. But what Julius AI is doing is it's actually running the R code that it generates. So when it gets an error, it can actually look at its entire traceback of that error and actually fix its code without you having to keep chatting back and forth. And so what happened here is it generated this initial R code. And then what happened is it got an error. So it said it could not find the function gather. And so what it did instead is it 
loaded in more packages here. So you can see it had only loaded in dply R here. And so it loaded in tidy R. The way that I would do this as a researcher is I would actually load in just tidyverse, which would load in all of these packages, but this works as well. So what it did now, it created the first data set. So this is a data set that it, it shows the head here. So you can see it's printing the head for us to look at. So it has the manufacturer, the type, and they used gather to get this. And then it has the mean MPG and the standard deviation of the miles per gallon. And so this is it's doing the first step. It's making sure the first step ran. Then it's taking that new data set and generating the plot that we would want for this. And so when we look at this now, you see that we actually get a plot with error bars that's actually a grouped bar chart. And this is exactly what we would expect. Our highway miles per gallon are higher than our city miles per gallon because these are all gas cars. So that's exactly what we would expect to get here. We have our axes label, we have a title. This looks fairly good. Now, what I would do is I still would not submit this for publication. And this is specifically because I would have my main axes bar. So I would have a square around this and then I would get rid of the tick lines within the chart area. So that's particularly how I would do it if I was submitting this for publication. But what I do want to show you is we can actually take this and run it within our studio. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open up my R Studio. This is just a clean page. And so I'm going to copy all of it in here and show you that we can actually run this to make sure it is running accurately and it's exactly what we want. So that's generating the table. And then if I come in here, this is going to generate the graph for me. So I can select all of it and click run. And you see, I get this in here now because once you know our code, then generating this like might have taken me a bit of time. So AI made that faster. But now that I know our code, it's actually going to be probably faster for me to just edit this the way that I want. So if I want it to look the way I want it to look, I'm actually going to change the theme to classic instead and run that. And so now you see that I get these codes here and here. And then I can set my Y axis. You see how it's up. There's naturally it's a little bit of an expansion there and I want to remove that. So now I can just add in two additional pieces of code. So I'm changing the theme. So theme classic gives you just the left and bottom bars where scale Y continuous gives you this. Now what you will notice is because I just did all of this, I changed the actual theming here. So what I'm going to do is now copy this part, which gave me the original theming. And I'm going to add that in because essentially when I rethemed it, I rewrote over all of that information. So if I rerun this, you can see now I'm getting that original type and I have my bar graphs actually sitting at zero and I have my left and bottom bars in with none of the minor tick marks going through the background of my plot. And so this is going to be better set for actually submitting it to a journal than it was originally. Now I could go into Julius AI and also ask it to change the patterning and things like that. So now I'm just asking it to change the striping. So I can say, can you create change this bar graph to have a striped black and white bar for CTY and a white bar for HWY? So what it did instead is it didn't really give me a striped bar. It gave me a black bar and a white bar. And the reason I wanted a striped bar is because now you can see you can't see that bottom error bars. So the reason it's probably not doing this is because it doesn't have GG pattern, which is the package you would use to do this. It doesn't have that loaded into the back end of Julius, so it doesn't probably know it, but this is probably a good set. I, if I was going to do it this way, I would use gray instead of black so that my error bar didn't get completely demolished there going into the actual black bar there where you can see it both up and down for the white bar. So overall, that is how you can actually use Julius AI to make your R writing code faster. Again, it's not going to replace you knowing the basics of R. So I would still recommend learning the basics of R and knowing how to do basic data analysis, or at least being able to think like a data analysis. So understanding that every problem you have probably has multiple approaches and what do you need to do? And that's how you're going to best get the results out of something like any AI at all. But I would far use Julius AI over something like ChatGPT for generating these data analytics codes in R or in Python.
If you're interested in Julius AI, I will have a link in the description below. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.